Hi, I'm Laura Zabel. I'm the Executive Director of Springboard for the Arts, and I am so excited to be able to welcome you to Springboard's new offices and community space on University Avenue in St. Paul. Our relationship with 262 University goes back over nine years. When we were doing the Irrigate Project, which was an artist-led community development project that happened during the construction of the light rail train, we actually hosted a community party right in this parking lot. And at that time, this was a long, vacant used car dealership in a huge asphalt parking lot. But it was also kind of accidentally preserved public space, and we thought it had a lot of possibility. So fast forward to 2018, we were able to acquire this site and we've been working since then to transform this space into a home for local artists, a community asset that serves the neighborhood, and a national model of creative people power. The mural behind me is actually called Creative People Power. It's by Discover Dope, which is the artists Mike Batson and Megan Tate, both artists who have really deep roots and relationships in the Frogtown and Rondo neighborhoods around us. And it's just such a beautiful and joyful example of the power that artists have to see the possibility in transforming what was a very ugly metal fence into this beautiful symbol of culture and creativity and connection. We're really excited that the old used car dealership sign is being reimagined by the artists Kao Li Tao and Ash Kubesh into an installation called The Gathering Tree. And that that transformation will highlight this whole transition from this place of extractive, environmentally unsustainable business into a healthy community gathering space. One of the most visible changes we've made to the site is that we've transformed the former parking lot into this green public plaza. It features native grasses and trees, a walking loop and a rain garden. And our goal with this space was really to transform it rooted in environmental sustainability and human-centered systems and also to create an open, fun, flexible space where we could host people. The stormwater tank behind me is part of a big project we did with the Capital Region Watershed District. It actually harvests stormwater runoff from our roof to water our grass. The mural on the water tank is by Alexandra Gurneau and it's part of a larger installation called Refraction, which was created by the team of Washi Creative, Kali, Christina Vang, and Tico Yang. Refraction has elements throughout the building and it highlights the path of the water and has explanatory signage which shares the story of the water and our responsibility to it. Behind me is one part of the Native Presence installation, which is a set of projects that really honor and highlight the Native people who are the original stewards of this land. These are all photographs by Nadanis Green and feature the 11 tribes that share the geography that we now call Minnesota, along with missing and murdered Indigenous relatives and Two-Spirit relatives. Wrapping around the building is a collaboration between artist Sarah Agaton Howes and Holly Young. It's a collaborative ledger and floral mural, and at either end has a Dakota and Anishinaabe woman, which represent the relationships and the strength of the Dakota and Anishinaabe communities in Minnesota. All of the Native Presence installation was commissioned with the support of David and Rosemary Good, and we were also able to work with 3M to utilize this really innovative film technology, and that allowed the artists to stretch their practice and use a new material. Also on the plaza, we have butterfly and prairie grass bike racks by Naomi Schleesman and Carl Zachman. These are two Fergus Falls-based artists. Springboard's rural office is based in Fergus Falls, and they have these same bike racks there, which is this really wonderful daily reminder of our connection and our work together. And now, here we are in the John S. and James L. Knight Community Hall. This used to be the garage where they detailed cars. And one of the kind of unusual things we did in as we were working on the design of this space was that we actually held the building in its pre-development phase for a year and we invited our community to use it. We hosted about 200 events and 6,000 people through the space. And that really taught us that what people want from a space like this is open, flexible, adaptable, community space, a space that they can use for workshops and events and celebrations and artist markets, all of the kinds of activities that really contribute to vibrant and just local economies. And we cannot wait to host more of those kinds of events now that the space is so beautiful and renovated. 
Above us, you can see more of that refraction installation that traces the path that the stormwater takes from our roof into that rainwater harvesting tank. We also have brand new HVAC system in the building, something that we didn't know would be as important to us as it is. One of the things we learned by inviting folks to use our space is that some things that we thought were things that we needed to get rid of or change were actually really great assets in the building. And one of those is that this door from our second floor into the community hall, which we thought was a dangerous door to nowhere, is actually the perfect location for a DJ booth. So we decided to formalize it and use it that way and put a railing in front of it to make it safer. And then the wonderful artist, third daughter, restless daughter, created this beautiful cross stitch installation to decorate that railing. Welcome to our office and workspace. This used to be a used car dealership showroom floor and now we have space for our staff to work and a variety of different sized meeting rooms that support our staff, support our work with artists and communities and a whole lot of art from local artists. The tile mural behind me is by Mercedes Austin of Mercury Mosaics. It really echoes the wooden tiles that honor the donors and supporters who helped make this project a reality. All of the spaces inside have artist made light fixtures by Heather Cole, Carl Unash, and the youth of Urban Boat Builders, and all of the interior spaces have privacy screens on the meeting rooms based on a painting by Takumba Aiken. Our goal for this project, or for this part of the building, was really to uplift the creativity of artists, demonstrate how essential artists are in helping us reimagine what's possible, and really create an atmosphere of belonging and welcome that people can feel as soon as they step in the door. If we head up to the second floor, now we're in the Vicki Benson Artist Resource Lab. We named this space in honor of the incredible local and national artist advocate, Vicki Benson. And we are so excited to have this kind of space to be able to offer artists a connection to the technology and the resources they need to make a living and a life. Stay tuned for a way to book this space, to use the scanner, to use the light box, to use the technology here, and of course, for all of the workshops that we can't wait to host from this space. And finally, up the elevator or the stairs, and we find ourselves on the Ecolab Skyline Terrace. You used to have to climb up a metal ladder and open a very heavy hatch to climb out here, so this is much better. The solar panel trellis above us is one of the first installations of these Lumos solar panels in our region. This whole project wouldn't have been possible without our amazing partners, Formula Architecture and Flannery Construction. Up here you'll also see a few more installations of the Refraction Project and these amazing sculptures by Fergus Falls artist Blaise Buseth. These sculptures are called Tom's Adventure, which is an interpretation of the rain cycle with water being passed down from one part of the sculpture to another. And in Blaise's words, this natural flow of water is a metaphor for the effective flow of resources in the community. And that's the tour! We are so excited to be able to hold this space and to start making it available for artists and our community to use. And we are so grateful for the huge community of people that made this project a reality. Stay tuned for more opportunities and connections to the space. And thank you so much for being here with us.